she was bound and determined not to let anything disturb the anointing of God. And she paid a price for that. But she sold the purples as well. Oral used to do that. I've seen Brother Copeland do that. I did that when I first started traveling certain churches. I need the head usher and tell them, don't let anybody enter this sanctuary once I start speaking. And we saw powerful things happen. And that's all things when we were powers were better just ready to be released, and then we, we messed up and it didn't. So we just need to make sure we honor the anointing of God, we recognize him, and we don't grieve him. Because we need his help. He's the one that brings, you know, from bringing all the presence and then takes us to the power, and that unleashes the miracles that we want to see in the days like that. Now, we're starting now about right now talking about having victory over darkness. Say victory. Victory. Now I'll give you some basic thoughts about this as we get started. There are some people who say we shouldn't study the works of Satan. They're wrong. We should. If we weren't to study it, it wouldn't be in the Bible. The fact it's in the Bible shows that we're to study it. And we're not afraid to study Satan's kingdom and things about him because we don't operate in fear, we operate in faith in God. And because of Jesus dying and raised from the dead, we are guaranteed victory over Satan in every encounter we have with him. So we don't operate in fear. And we do this in the natural realm. I'm a former athlete. So in high school, when we had high school football games, we had scouting reports on the opposing team. We knew their tendencies. We knew what they wanted to do, when they wanted to do it. We knew individually the players we were going to play against, see across the line from us, what their tendencies were. Why? So we could beat them. Did the same thing in baseball and basketball. I remember getting scouting court basketball teams. The day of the game, we'd go in. They'd show us film of our opponents. They'd show me, you're guarding this guy, Jerry, today. He doesn't go to his left. He can't dribble his left hand. So guess what I made him do the whole night? Dribble his left hand and stop him. So this is like a scouting report. The Bible gives us a scouting report on the enemy so we can know his tendencies. That's why the Bible says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We need to be educated on how he operates, why he operates, why. So we can make sure he doesn't operate in our lives. And more importantly, or as important, we can help other people who don't know what we know so we can help them overcome and close the doors to Satan himself and to his cohorts. And so we have no fear at all. And I love exposing him. I had a whole class in the EBI years ago, just part of uh, half that class was exposing the enemy from the Bible. And it just changes your life when you understand. In fact, Jesus said, and even the Bible said later, uh, when the end times would come and we'd see who Satan really was, as we see him, we would say, this is the one that caused all the havoc. He's not that big a deal. But the one thing he is a big deal about is he's persistently trying to get inside the lives of Christians. And he's persistently trying to destroy their lives. And so we're going to expose him without any fear. So we are better equipped to not only deal with him, but help deal with him for other people as well who will come across. Does that make sense? So we're not cowering down. We're not, you know, if you don't show up, that tells me you don't take God serious. Because this is what he put in the word. He wanted us equipped. He wanted us vigilant. So he would do what he did, and that's destroy the works of the devil. And the only way to destroy those is know how he works. So we're going to be exposing him. Some other basic thoughts is John 10.10 10 is the foundation for all this. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what I call Satan. Satan comes to steal part of your life, to try to kill you, and to destroy you. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. So anything that gives you life is coming from God. Anything that's taken life away from you comes from the devil. And you need to understand that. New Testament people, we see, the, when you look in the, in the New Testament, you see the devil being cast out of people. Those people were not Christians. They weren't Christians. Jesus was still walking the face of the earth. They weren't saved. Salvation wasn't available to them because Jesus was still alive. In the Bible, there's no evidence of a Christian being demon-possessed at all. And we're going to get into the individual stuff about this in the days ahead. And we're going to show you that. You, that's why I talked last week about being a three-part being. That you're a spirit who lives in a body who has a soul. Your mind, intellect, and your emotions. All right? A Christian cannot be, and we'll serve this later, but I'm just going to throw it out there now. A Christian cannot be possessed in their spirit. 
but you can be possessed in your mind, in your soul, your mind, intellect, your emotions, and you or and as well as in your body, but not in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you that in the scriptures later on down the road. Sickness and disease comes from, listen to this, demonic oppression. <clears throat> Every sickness and disease, from head cold to cancer, everything in between, even those that in Asia, comes from demonic oppression. In the Garden of Eden, there was no sickness, there was no disease at all. None. That came when Adam and Eve fell and came into the earth at that time. There was no death in the Garden of Eden as well. And so sickness and disease, its root cause, I mean, where it comes from, is demonic oppression. So when you're battling some of the symptoms of your body, you can know that this didn't come from God and that God wants you well. And then you go to the scriptures to find those scriptures to stand on to believe for your health. And, and listen, I learned this from more over years ago too. It doesn't matter how you get healed, just get healed. Mm -hmm. I used to get ridiculed all the time because he wore glasses. He had a shoulder operation. From doing this, they figured over 3.5 million times just doing that, laying hands on people. He carved a notch in his shoulder that was painful. So it's shoulder surgery. And the news media made fun of him. I thought you were the great healer man. Why can't you heal yourself? He said, I don't care how I get healed. God, God's put doctors in here on the earth as well as uh, medical people to help me. I'm taking their help. But why didn't you pray for yourself? I mean, they just wouldn't live alone, you know, whenever he had something wrong with him. And, and so I learned from him, I remember him saying, it doesn't matter how you get healed, the best way is to believe in God. And, and solemnly being healed by the word of God. The spirit of God, but if that doesn't happen, go see a doctor. Doctors are on God's side. Most of them, at least. And yet, that's what I think that's a lot of wisdom. So why should we, again, study the kingdom of darkness and Satan? Because we want to win every time over the devil and every face him. We want to win. We gain insights into his kingdom, which helps us to stay free, and that was us to keep other people free. And we study without fear, like I said before. Now, we're going to start this by looking at Four things are in, in, in relationship to the spiritual kingdoms that operate not only here in the earth but in the heavens. There are three heavens the Bible talks about. Second Corinthians 12, 2 verses 4, 2 through 4. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of his body I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up into the third heaven. Which heaven? Third. Third. Now, if there's a third heaven, you think there'd be a second heaven? Yes. You think there'd be a first heaven? Yes. No doubt. So he shows us here he's caught to the third heaven. And I know such a man with a body or out by I mean, I know God knows he was caught up into paradise. And he talked about the third heaven, and now he coins and ties into the third heaven, gives insight that that's where paradise is. And heard express inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. So the first heaven. It's right above us in the atmosphere. Some people call it the atmospheric heaven or the heavenlies. The Bible refers to it too many times as the heavenlies. The second heaven is beyond the first heaven. This is out in what we call space. You have stars, you have planets, you have the galaxies. Uh, and sometimes the Bible is referred to as the heavenlies as well. And in this area, as we'll see in a few minutes, is where demons and devils operate. This is where they come from and operate from the second heaven. The third heaven is beyond the second heaven. This is further than science has ever been able to look or know about or explore. They've never been able to explore the third heaven. This is where the throne of God is located. For the Bible refers to as paradox is located. This is where we go as Christians when we die. Our spirit leaves and goes into, into, into the third heaven where God lives. And I've given you a lot of scriptures here for that. Luke 23, 43, 2 Corinthians 12, 4, Revelation 2, 7, and even Jesus in Mark 16, 19, Hebrews 1, 3, and Hebrews 4, verse 4, all show that. John 14, 2 tells us, shows us that our mansions, we have mansions being built for us, and they're located in the third heaven as well. And so that's third heaven is where God lives. Now, Look with me in Ephesians 6.12. It says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So our fight's not with people. 
Everybody understand that? Your fight, your spiritual fight is not with people. But against principalities, against powers, against rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Now look at those four categories of Satan's kingdom. And in this scripture, Ephesians 6, 12, they are given to us in reverse order. This is reverse order. Principalities is the lowest form of, of, of evil spirit there is. It's the lowest. He talks about it first. Powers is the second one. They're more powerful than the principalities. The rules of darkness are more powerful than those two. And lastly, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places is more powerful than all three of the ones before it. He puts these in reverse order for us. So four categories of devils or demons or evil spirits. Principalities, powers, rules of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, let's look at them from the greatest to the least. Let's reverse the order. Look at the greatest one and down to the least one. Wicked spirits or spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the highest class, and these entities operate in the second heaven. They're not on the earth. They operate in the second heaven. They're the most powerful evil spirits there are in Satan's kingdom. The most powerful. And they don't operate near, they operate in the second heaven. All right? Now, one thing about them is uh, they don't like being exposed. Okay? And so when I was preparing this, putting this all together, uh, you know, in the form of a PowerPoint presentation, as I got started, I got the first slide. First slide, and I got in the second slide, and my computer completely quit working. I started laughing. And I literally looked upward, and I said, you really think you're going to stop this? I said, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off my computer. Now, in Jesus' name. And it knew the Holy Spirit showed me one thing to do. And what, I, what he told me to do was I have a, a software program called OneDrive. It's Microsoft-based. He told me, go disconnect. Go disconnect uh, that app. I went and disconnected OneDrive, and the computer worked absolutely perfectly. That was an evil spirit in that second heaven manifesting into my computer because he didn't want this thing coming for you guys today. And so I took authority over it, heard the wizard say something, made the adjustment, and we were fine. See, I'm sure enough that because when you start exposing them, they don't like it, particularly those in the second heaven. Rules of darkness of this world. It's the highest class of demons that we, we as believers have to deal with on the earth. They're the highest class of demons that we have to deal with on the earth. They're here on the earth with us. And they'll manifest themselves sometimes from the first heaven. They are actually here on the earth. Thirdly, the powers are dominated. And this is very interesting. These powers are dominated and, and receive their instruction from the rulers of darkness of this world. So when we see in Ephesians 6, 12, talks about powers, those powers are dominated, and they receive instruction from the rules of darkness of this world. And then principalities. They're the lowest class of evil spirits. They're ruled and dominated by the other categories, and they do very little thinking on their own. They really can't think on their own much. They're told what to do. And again, they're in the first heaven, and they manifest themselves here on the earth. Uh, and so those are the ones we deal with those that are here in the earth with us but they get instructions from evil spirits that are not in the earth that are above the second heaven everybody with me? understand? now first heaven, Ephesians 2.2 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit now notice, it, notice this this scripture in Ephesians 2 2 shows us and is talking about the prince of the power of the air, the spirit. It's talking about this spirit being in the first heaven, who now works in the sons of disobedience. He works in who? People who are disobeying God in the earth, who become evil. Satan's domain. Now we can't see them, but they dominate and rule anyone in the earth who will let them. These Prince of, the prince of the power of the air is the spirit, the evil spirits. 
and they will dominate anyone and rule anyone on the earth who will let them. I've, that means as a Christian, this earth can rule your life if you allow it to. If you don't allow it to, it can't. Only you can give it authority to rule and dominate your life. But you can shut that off and not allow it. Isn't that good news? Now the second half, Ephesians 6.12. For do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against principalities, powers, rules, darkness, or the insatiation, spiritual weakness, a host of weakness in heavenly places. These wicked spirits, these spiritual wickedness in high places, they rule here. They rule here. In the third heaven is God's throne. So again, first where paradise is, we said. And there's no wicked spirits in the third heaven. None. So when you die go to heaven, there'll be no Satan there, no evil spirits, no demons, no nothing. Just God and the angels and all the Christians who've gone before you. Isn't that good news? So there's no evil spirits in the third heaven. Now, I want to show you something. We're going to give you some meat about his kingdom as we go through this week after week, and you're going to learn things you've never learned before as we do this. And it's going to give you some insights and things that are going to help you, help you to help others as well. There is a double kingdom. We're talking about now about a double kingdom. How many kingdoms would be a double kingdom? Two. 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 Okay. A double kingdom is where a wicked kingdom rules in the heavenlies, which affects mankind and men and women, their lives in the earth. A kingdom is ruled by men on the earth who are actually dominated and influenced by spiritual rulers in the heavenlies. I'm going to say that again. The double kingdom is a wicked kingdom ruling in the heavenlies, which affects mankind's lives in the earth. A kingdom ruled by men on the earth who are actually dominated and influenced by spiritual rulers in the heavens. So there's evil spirits, wicked spirits in the heavens that are ruling and dominating and telling men and women what to do, even boys and girls here on the earth, and people are actually obeying them and doing it. You have to understand that. They don't care how old somebody is, what gender they are. If they can get in, they're going to get in and do their deal. Now, Ezekiel 28. We're going to verse 2, 9, and 10. This is a prophetic word that came to Ezekiel the prophet. Verse 2. Son of man, save the prince of Tyre. Thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a God. I send the seeds of God from the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a God. Though you set your heart as the heart of God, you will you say before him who slays you, I am a God, but you shall be a man and not a God. He goes on to talk about a few other things. Now, you see here in these verses twice, God is saying he's not a God, but he's a man. Do you see that? So the prince of Tyre is a man. He's not a spirit. It's actually a man in the earth. Remember that. The prince. Everybody say prince. Prince. Of, of Tyree. Tyree. So the prince of Tyree is a man. man. Got it. Now think about this. He goes on in the last part of verse 9 and says, In the hand of him who slays you, verse 10, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. This shows us the fact he said he would die. Evil spirits don't die. Angels don't die. They're sealed. It's either angels or evil spirits. They can't change that. They had make a choice years ago to follow God or follow, follow Satan. A third of the angels left heaven to follow Satan and he was thrown out by God. That means God's angels outnumber Satan's demons at least two to one. That's good news. Very good news. Right? And so in this case, when he talks about being a man twice and shows that he's going to die, that's, that it emphasizes, remember the Bible says, I think we established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. There's three witnesses right here that this person is a real person on the earth. Now, Ezekiel 28, verse 12 and 13, gives us more insight. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre. Now, who did we read about? The prince of Tyre. Now we're reading about the king of Tyre. And say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were eating in the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardes, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the 
turquoise, the emerald with gold. The Lord will shed through timbrels and pipes will prepare for you on the day you were created. In other words, the king of Tyre is a wicked spirit and a power that rules in the heavenlies. He is, this scripture is actually referring to Lucifer himself, who was a created being one of the archangels of God until he fell. He was a fallen spirit who ruled in an earthly kingdom from his position of rulership in the heavenlies. There's, there's the double kingdom. He was in the heavenlies, but then ruled through people in the earth. That's the double kingdom. A natural kingdom in the earth that's ruled by men, but is dominated by a spiritual kingdom ruled by spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. Can you see the double kingdom? You see it? Wicked spirits in the heavenlies dominating men in the earth and ruling through them. That's how they work. That's how they work. There's a second instance of the devil kingdom showing up in Daniel 10. Uh, this is even more clear. Verse 12 and 13. And he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, from, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. So Daniel, we know, was praying to God. And the word came back from God to Daniel was, for the first time you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself, you know, you have, when you pray, you humble yourself to pray, right? He's telling Daniel, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. This angelic being had come to Daniel because of Daniel's words from his prayers. So when you pray, you set things in motion in the spiritual realm. And that prayer goes up into heaven. It goes through the first heaven, the second heaven, into the third heaven where God lives. When you pray, that's how your prayers go up. And the Bible says they're immediately heard. And this angel said, I have come for your words. So how you pray can bring angels to you to help you. can bring the answer from God back to you from the third heaven. Isn't that good news? So you know how to pray in, in, in coordination with God's word and according to his spirit because we want that information back to us, right? But there was a problem that happened when Daniel prayed. And this verse exposes it. Verse 13, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. So when Daniel prayed, his prayer went through the first, second, and third heaven to the heavenlies. And the angel said, your words were heard. I come. I came back to bring an answer because of your words. But then he says, "The prince of the kingdom of Persia was to me twenty-one days." Where was the kingdom of Persia? Where was this prince at? In the second heaven. God sent the answer from the third heaven and had to go through the second heaven, and that's where the battle happened. The king, the prince of Persia, kept that message from getting through for twenty-one days. There was a battle, a spiritual battle. That's why sometimes when you pray. You don't get an immediate answer. Because sometimes there's a battle in the heavenlies, spiritual in the heavenlies that are taking place. That your answer is coming through an angel through the second heaven, and there's a battle there. And this angel couldn't get through with the message that you know needed because of this evil spirit called the Prince of Persia. Watch what God did. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had they left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now notice he said the kings of Persia. Before he said who was to him? The prince. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. He said a prince of Persia I was battle with. But I was left alone there and then I had to deal with the kings of Persia. More wicked spirits than the prince. It shows you categorically power in the rank and file of Satan's kingdom. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. A prince of Persia was studying, but the kings of Persia wouldn't let the, the message get through. So what's God? He sends Michael. Michael is the warring angel. Michael is, is referred to as the warring angel in the Bible. When Michael shows up, battle is over. He's got more power than any angelic being ever created by God. When you see uh, the evidence in the, Old Te in the New Testament, of what's going to happen when Jesus returns to the earth, and when there's, you know, when we're, we're raptured out of here as a church first, and then the wrath of God's poured out to the earth. See the Antichrist, all that stuff going on that will happen in the future. 
you look all that and see all that. But the one thing you got to know is there's going to be a there's going to be a war. The world is going to go to war against Israel. The Bible declares it'll be a 24 hour war, and in that war, Israel will not lose one person, not one Israelite will die. How can that be? Because Michael will be doing the fighting. When Michael fights, one one quick swift of Michael. And millions of people can die just like that. He's that powerful. And he'll be unleashed during that time. And we see him unleashed here. And so him being unleashed, he took care of the kings of Persia, the prince of Persia, and now the message came to Daniel 21 days later. But it was sent immediately. Are you hearing me? It was sent immediately. So when you pray and you don't see any results, that's where your faith comes in saying, I believe God. I've studied scriptures. I've spoke to God about it, and I'm not the answer. And you just keep saying that. And as you say that, that enforces it in heavenlies, and then God will send whatever He needs to send, whoever He needs to send, to make sure it gets back to you. Isn't that good? And that guarantees you victory every single time. Now, I would say, in by a Christ state, most Christians don't even know this. They barely read these scriptures. They have no idea what goes on when they pray, and most of us don't pray enough anyway. So. So the good news is, when there is a battle, God will finally say, that's enough, and send Michael, send, send whoever you need to send to get the job done. And that's good news for us. Persia was a physical kingdom in the earth with a human prince leading it. But he was dominated by a spiritual kingdom of darkness ruled by a wicked spirit called the Prince of Persia. Every spirit dominated the earthly government of Persia. An evil spirit dominated the earthly government of Persia. Spirit beings who have been in the heavenlies that rule region of the earth through men who are yielded to them. Say it again. There are spirit beings who have been in the heavenlies in the second heaven that rule a region of the earth through men who have yielded to them. Let me give you an example of this. Right now, present day. <coughs> when you have to look at our government, and what our government has done in, in its history. When our government decide, decided and had the abortion issue, decided, okay, to kill babies, that came from a prince, an evil spirit in the second heaven, into the earth that found men and women that would agree with that and enforce that. That's what happened to our country in, in this world. Many come up with that, an evil spirit did. Recently, in our country, we saw that reversed with the Supreme Court. And you see how that kicked up the spirits of darkness. They didn't like that. And they fought really hard against that. Anybody who stands against abortion, you're there, you're, you got a target your back with them. I say, so what? So bring it. We got more power than you have. We know where our power lies. Amen. And that lies in you or the government. It lies in God. His name is Jesus. Amen. And we're more powerful than they are. And for God finally said, that's enough. Christians had prayed, believe God, for decades, and finally, God released some things, and we saw that change. And so, understand this, elections have consequences. Elections either empower darkness, or they empower light. Think about that. Knowing what we know now, seeing what's going on right now in our nation, would you say there's a possibility that evil spirits are controlling and dominating people in our leadership in our, in our country? Yes. There's no doubt they are. Even down from the national level to the state level to the city level. We've seen it. Right? Yeah. And that's why you remember that this election coming up is so important. Uh, because it will empower or depower lives. Keep the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. No matter how that vote goes. It will empower one of those two kingdoms here in the earth. We want to empower the kingdom of light, right? And, and so when you've got people who are running for office, you suddenly see good people being lied about and being made fun of, and they're trying to say that this group of people has nothing to do with democracy, they're against democracy. That's the devil's talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Trying to keep their power. They'll do anything to keep that power. COVID was not about a disease. <clears throat> COVID was about control and power. Yeah. That's all that's about. It's about control and power. It's not about a disease. 
And yet, it killed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Whose work was that? That was Satan's work. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God. God doesn't remember showing people. It's Satan does. And he did. He's still trying to do that. See? And so, and then that influence can influence your life and affect your life. See? And, and, and so, darkness doesn't want people to get help mm -hmm. from the kingdom of light. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Darkness wants to stay in darkness and keep everything dark. Now, I'm going to say this so you can understand it even better. You've been through it. A lot, a lot, a lot of you. Well, I guess we've all been through it. COVID can't. can't. When we go to our, these conferences we go to and, uh, in summer and then in end of January or February, I was the only pastor ever I talked to, and I think shouldn't say the same thing, whose church did not miss one service because of COVID. We didn't talk to anybody else who had that record. They all had shut down. They had to. They said. And they said, how did you get by with that? We said, we didn't. We had meetings that led up to a certain church in March of 21, in the midst of all that. And the, the government had certain stipulations. At that time, you couldn't have more than 25%, I think it was, no, 10% of the total capacity of the room. And I said, we're just getting started. You know, the capacity of this room on that wall back there, I remember it's three or 400. 10%, that's 30, 40 people. We started with 13. And so then we grew to 25, then to 30. And we, <coughs> people here gave us free access and said, you know, you can decide how you want to help, you know, handle COVID by yourself. You can decide what you want to do with masks and non-masks. And we did. Mm -hmm. We told you, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Wear a mask, that's fine. Not wear it, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. We're good. We're going to be here. So darkness... <laughs> That control to shut down churches didn't shut us down. We said no to it. <clears throat> and, but see, I said darkness doesn't like light to come into it. And so there were times we had people that were in hospitals. And we went to visit them, and we got so far, and they wouldn't let us in. Mm -hmm. And I said, but we're their pastors. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What, well, what was that? That was not a man stopping a pastor. That was an evil spirit. Stop the pastor. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. I remember when he was see Rich. Mm -hmm. And I got so far, we got so far into the building, they said, you can't go any further. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm his pastor. We don't care. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed. And, and so I'm, I went to battle with him a little bit, mm -hmm. back and forth with him. I said, if you're going to keep a man of God away from a, a man who I'm his pastor, mm -hmm. yes, we are. What if I refuse? We'll call security and be thrown out. Oh. See. So what do we do? We pray more earnestly for him and for them and for that rule of darkness to be removed. Amen. See? And it worked. Rich is here today. Amen. Amen. This is faith in God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's get God in here. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So when we look about this, we have to understand that control. And power is all Satan wants. That he can't have it unless we give it to him. If you don't give him authority in your life, he can't take the power from you and use it against you. Right. You determine, you determine, no one else, you determine what role the darkness plays in your life. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. I like that because I want to have control myself. I'd rather control that than have somebody else control it. That's why as an athlete, I always love being an athlete because. I could control. I, I decided how much I was going to practice. I was going to decide how much I was going to work out. I was going to decide what I'm going to do to prepare myself to play in those games. And no one else decided but me. Now, of course, my coach had guidelines, but I would go with his guidelines and go and pass those. Why? Because I wanted to be the very best. And because of much that I did that, we took third in the nation my senior year and won a national championship two years later as a coach. So darkness does not want light to come in. Now, have you ever noticed this? You ever notice that darkness cannot overcome light? Mm -hmm. We walk in this room. Mm -hmm. Today, Joe and Deb walked before we did because they had the key from last week. But when we walk into this room on a Sunday morning, it's dark in here. As soon as we throw a switch and the light comes on, the darkness does what? It's, it's gone. It's leaves. Amen. Light always overcomes darkness. Do you notice there's not a darkness light you can throw to make the light go away? Think about that. Why is there not a darkness light? 
<laughs> yeah, darkness light and the light would go. That exists. Why? Because God is great. So everything in the earth operates that way too. So God don't have the final say. Light will always make darkness go. Amen. All the time. In your life and your spiritual walk with God as well. Right? So as we look ahead, we understand that we as people in the earth are children of light, are children of God, and we enforce the devil's defeat. And that's we're not afraid of him. That's we're not afraid of exposing him and talking about him. Because he's wrecking havoc in people's lives. He wrecks havoc in people's lives. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wet your appetite and then I'll, I'll leave it here today because we'll we'll start to, uh, next week and continue this. But I'm going to throw this out there because we're going to answer some questions a lot of you have had over the years about certain things. Like, you know, can a Christian be demon possessed? And I said earlier, not your spirit. Not your spirit. But they can in their mind, their intellect and their emotions, and their body, but not their spirit. The Bible talks about, you'll see today that we talk more about this, it talks about the saving of your soul. He's not talking about your salvation that gets you to heaven. He's talking about your mind, your intellect, and your emotions becoming saved to a point that saving doesn't have access to it based on what you do with the Word of God. I don't know about you, but most 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 people don't, don't even know that exists in the Bible, let alone know how to operate in that. You're, you're going to learn that if you don't already know. If you do know, it will enhance what you know. But, that, that is very, very true. I've seen Christian people get influenced and dominated by evil spirits and end up in the same silence. Mm -hmm. They entertain the wrong things. You don't play with darkness. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this, or you're here with this slide today, you don't play with Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. You don't play with witchcraft. You don't play with your horoscope. You don't even look at your horoscope as a Christian. If you are, you need to stop. Because mm -hmm. that's not from God. That's set in motion in the earth to be, quote, harmless to get you hooked in. Mm -hmm. To get you hooked in. Say. De devils and demons, evil spirits are real. They manifest in the earth. They manifest through people. I'll give you this before we bring it to an end today. Uh, well, I used to travel from Tulsa to Jamestown, New York, to preach a lot. Uh, we had a, one of the former students at a church there. And uh, we had a guy in our church who, who was a pilot for Continental Airlines. And so when I first came to Jamestown, I flew into Buffalo, and they brought me by car to Jamestown from Buffalo, headed west. And we went through these towns, and I started noticing these signs and they were about very just out in the open about it, very blatant, and it's it's it was a, it was a university for Satan, <clears throat> a university for Satanism. We got a college degree and studied Satan, and so I saw that, and I asked the guy driving. I said, the pastor was with us, and, and I said, what is that? He said, oh, they have they actually have colleges and universities that are teaching Satanism all the way to sacrificing human lives, and everything in between. I said, really. He said, yep. I said, is there an auditorium in this town? <clears throat> and the driver said, oh, you don't want to do that. I said, oh, yeah, I do. Okay. He said, I asked if there's an auditorium in the town. You don't want to do that. I said, yes, I do. No, you don't understand. I said, yes, I do understand. Mm -hmm. Because Christians haven't stood up, and men, when God had not stood up, the devils have a stronghold here. Yeah, we can break that. We get an auditorium of a meeting and let them bring their stuff, and, and we'll see who's, who's greater, God or the devil. Amen. Oh, you don't want to do that. We see things manifest here. Said, well, so that's because you won't take authority over it. Yeah. Well, you understand, we see demons in our 100 miles away in the city. They get influenced by devils here, and they show up in the, in the <coughs> showers and bodies. There's bite marks on the bodies. Come out of the shower. I said, that's because people aren't taking authority over him. Yeah. He said, you'd really do I said, yeah. This place had an auditorium. And I couldn't get anybody to do it with me. Here, all the Christians and the pastors were afraid. One guy said to me, we see things flying through the air sometimes. I said, in your church? He said, yeah, we have at times. I said, why don't you take authority over that? Why would you allow that to manifest? Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. See, I learned, learned a long time ago in Tulsa, our church in Tulsa, we had demon-possessed people. We take them behind the curtain to catch up the We didn't try to do it from the crown. Why? The demons want, the demons want that attention. Mm -hmm. We just we get them, they come down, we get, I mean, 
I, I can remember one time dealing with this person came down. They brought him down to me. We did an altar ministry. And uh, they, I saw him come, and I thought, oh, here we go. And he brought him down to me. I looked at the man. I said, you have one or two choices. He said, what's that? I said, one. I said, I can set you free of all, that, all, all these demons inside of you. Mm-hmm. Or number two, you're going to keep them. They're going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Which one do you want? He said, help me. Help me. And that time, the demons started manifesting themselves mm-hmm. <coughs> really strongly. Four ushers did the wrong thing. Two you. grabbed each arm, two grabbed each leg, and he just flipped, and off they went flying 20 feet in the air, mm-hmm. all four different directions. I said, don't touch him. He's got supernatural strength because of these devils. Don't touch him. Mm-hmm. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command every evil spirit, every devil, this man, now stop and desist you in what you're doing. Stop in Jesus' name. Then the man said, follow me. He followed me. Took me behind the curtain and cast all those devils out of me. Behind the curtain. We're not giving the devil that, that access. <clears throat> Watch this happen. Why is that? He wants attention. We're not getting have that attention, though, people. People want some miracle. We'll just take it back around and cast the devil out. It's made interesting. The first sign Jesus talked about believers having people is the sign of casting out devils. And how often do we sit in church? And yet I can tell you, churches across America today, people people bring demons in with them, bring evil spirits in with them, and leave with them. And it shouldn't be that way. But they do. They do. Think about it. I mean, I, I want to show you this because we want you to be victorious. When you don't tithe, you allow evil spirits to enter into your life. And most people don't know that. Go back and read Malachi. <coughs> Talk about tithes and offerings. It says if you don't do that, you're what? Cursed with a curse. And that's not going to help you. That's going to hurt you. Are you hearing me? So what I'm telling you is, if we allow the enemy into our lives in certain areas, they get a stronghold, and they'll use that stronghold to try to steal, kill, and restore our life. And none of us want that. But we want to be victorious in Christ. And we are every single time. If we'll enforce it. We do what the Word of God says. Does that make sense? So today was kind of the introductory part of this we wanted you to have so that you would understand these entities, First and second and third heaven, the type of entities there are. We're going to talk about each one of these different entities again, more specifically, again next week, and then we'll explore some other things along the way. But we're going to really empower you with some with some insight from the Bible on how to deal with these spirits the correct way, so that not only you can have victory in your life, but also you can keep other people free and help free other people. And, and I can, I'll close with this: there was a person in the last year or so that I went and ministered to, and me and Pastor Kim went and ministered to, and uh, had become so oppressed, and part of them had become possessed, not their spirit, but other parts of their, you know, their body and their emotions, and showed them what to do, brought scriptures for them, already typed out for them, gave them two books to read, prayed, cast those evil spirits off of them, and they got delivered from it, got better, still got a ways to go, but they're better. And it was amazing to me to talk to them about a couple months ago. And they said, I have no memory of you even being in my house. What is that? That's how far into the spirits they were. They don't even remember us being there. Don't have memory of it, fine. Because the devil put blinders on them. Are you hearing it? Mm-hmm. To that point. No memory of it. Mm-hmm. Now, part of that might be good if God could be erasing the memory banks to help that person stay free mm-hmm. and to get freer. See? So, but God will do things like that because He loves people. He loves people. He loves you. He loves me. And He'll do things to help us if we want to. Amen? Amen. 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 Those of you watching my video or watching this on Facebook, thank you for joining us. Remember this. You've got victory of the devil, and Jesus is Lord. Amen.